Tsunami Studios. I would like to start by saying I'm very surprised by how many Boom Studios books I've been picking up recently. It just goes to show you how they are crushing it and are going to be a powerhouse in comic books. So I really like that a lot. I got to go back and read the Power Ranger stuff. I keep saying that. I still haven't done it, and I'm going to do it. We only find them when they're dead. What a great title. It invokes a classic science fiction feel to me. Also something very anime. I dig it a lot. This is an Al Ewing book. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he is crushing it on Immortal Hulk and so many other great things. You'd love his writing. This book is really good. Like, it's surprising how interested I was in it because it wasn't something that I'd say initially would grab me. It's kind of like this weird, I don't know how, I don't know the best way to describe it, it's just like this weird anime feeling story and normally I'm not into that stuff. I thought it was going to be a little more like Gundam me and we're going to have big mech suits, but nope, I wasn't expecting that at all, so I like where we went with it actually. I will say this too, Simone DiMeo's artwork is phenomenal. I think there is just some great everything's perfect in this book when it comes to the art style it's so vibrant so colorful but invokes this dark sense of fear inside space it's very gorgeous very well done i think that is one of the highlights of this book for me because you, even if the book even if i didn't think like the writing or the story was captivating i'd probably read it for this artwork because it's so gorgeous to look at just the giant pictures and all the godlike figures and the way everyone has a distinct look it's unreal it looks incredible so really good part of that simone you're knocking it out of the park that looks incredible so the story of this book we are in the future of 2367 and in this future there are like space aliens who are considered gods and these big powerful creatures but they're all dead and there's a bunch of them that are dead nobody really understands why they die or how they die how can you kill a god maybe that'll be explored in the book at some point but there are these like crews that like go to excavate stuff from the body. You can like cut off pieces and sell it for stuff. They're talking about like how some of the fluids that come from the eyes can be used to make certain jams and cultures. How you can use some of the bone tissue or the teeth for that kind of stuff. And it's really disturbing and really interesting how that plays into the story. So we follow this one team of four people. We got Captain Malik, who is the leader. Then there's Alice and Jason, and I think Elle's the last one. And they all have these different roles on the ship of the Vahan. And what they're doing is they're arriving at the, the, the body of this dead god, right? So there's the sea god that's just floating in the starways. It's this ginormous creature. That I think it's a woman god. It looks very feminine, at least. And you, there's all these other crews arriving there. So you kind of have to claim what part of the body you would like to use. So people are like, oh, we could go for the eyes. Oh, we could go for the feet and that kind of stuff. But the crew of the Vahan says, oh, we'll go for the nose, we'll go for the mouth, and we'll go for the hand. It's really creepy. They have like a giant sword that attaches to their ship, and then they can like cut off parts of the mouth and cut off the nose and get store that on the ship. It's really weird and interesting, and it, it's a really good way to like kind of build up your world because you're seeing there are gods in this world, there are people who do not like the gods and will use their bodies for their own personal profit, and there's a whole system about mining gods and you know colonizing gods and taking all that stuff from them. It's very weird and very just disturbing in a lot of ways. It's so interesting. Then, of course, you have people fighting for a certain area, the people fighting for the eyes, you, and they're starting to fight. And you have, like, a, a woman, her name's Paula Richter, Richard, I think, something like that. And she is kind of like the police force that just kind of, like, goes around making sure everything's in order. And if you step out of line, she's going to blast you dead because you can't just mine parts of the god illegally. There's a whole system that goes into it. There's so much exposition in here, but it's not even exposition. It's just you are learning everything that's happening through the people talking and it doesn't feel like it's being forced at you. It just feels like, oh, this is another day in the life for these people. These are the things they talk about. This is the life that's going on around them. Very fascinating stuff. Captain Malik himself is a very interesting lead. He's got a very distinct look. He's like the old person on the crew. I think because uh, we see a flashback to him in 2323. He's a kid. Then in 67, he, he's aged up at least like 44 years. So, yeah, he's going to be an older man very grizzled very hardcore but the rest of his crew is like these young people so that maybe they don't know some of the harshness of reality we do get this kind of interesting interaction between paula and malik because we know that paula killed his parents so obviously there's a stigma around him that he's not this professional mining guy for the gods so everyone thinks he's this scumbag but he's actually a pretty good guy and that's a really fascinating angle to play i'm really enjoying this i think as a first issue goes it kind of shows us Here's the world. There's gods, there's people that mine the gods for resources, we have crews of ships, there's some interplay between the crews and the ships, and there's people fighting each other for certain parts of the body. 
does this mean we are going to see a real god or a living god at least at some point i definitely think we will i definitely think that's where this is going and maybe the they won't be happy seeing what people are doing to the bodies of these gods and also makes me think is there a force that could kill the gods how are we going to see how that comes into play pretty fascinating first issue it's all about the mining we're just figuring out the world and i like it a lot the artwork is stellar beautiful unseen before classic al ewing writing where he's building up a big world just in a small issue so it's definitely worth reading i'm going to give we only find them when they're dead issue one a nine out of ten i think it's very enjoyable very expositiony but if you get past that you're going to get something really cool if just for the artwork alone it's gorgeous so thank you guys so much for watching this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and as always you can check me out on instagram patreon twitter all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next one have fun, stay safe, good luck.